Amy, let Hello. me kick off with you, your greatest okay. Britain. My greatest Britain today is Queen Adele. Uh, oh, being wow. generally fabulous. And this is because she's done this new shoot uh, for Vogue magazine. And it sounds like, Amy, she's also... I mean, she looks sensational. Mm -hmm. And she reveals in this interview, she talks about her marriage breakdown, but also that she's lost seven stone. Seven stone, indeed. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on the album that is about well, we haven't heard it yet. But we know what it's called, don't we? <laughs> What's it called? 30. Now, well, Adele that is, isn't confirmed. Adele is, is currently. Is, is that confirmed? Uh, she confirmed roughly, it? she projected all those things, didn't she? We don't know. It's been everywhere. It was, it was it's probably called Thirty Dan. Let's face it. And what was she doing when she turned thirty? Well, she was getting divorced, wasn't she? So it looks like this album is going to be telling the story of what happened in the marriage. Yes, yeah, she talks about that. Um, <laughs> Dominique, the, you're not excited the, about the this. The Times, <laughs> kind of. the <laughs> Times <laughs> says on its front page, Adele has said that she hopes her comeback album will explain her divorce to her son. And the Daily Mail said on their front page that she admits that she's embarrassed uh, about her marriage. About a so short quickly. marriage. It's a hard relate for no, me. I had an ill-fated short marriage. It's a very embarrassing thing. Don't and I can't wait to hear about she's gonna it. She's going to sing songs about she's it. She's going to sing songs about it Don't and we're all going to get to listen to them. The son thing, though, like... Son, here, listen to this album. You'll understand why. It's, it's all a bit like. Well, look, do you want do you want to see the little do you want to see the there? little teaser for the album? Yeah, we do. Oh, Come on. Do you know what I just love? I just love that we have a big music superstar. It's like the old days, you know, this was like if Madonna was releasing an album, if Prince was releasing an album, if Michael Jackson was releasing an album. And I love, that's just what I love. We, yeah. You know, it's not about, oh, just release some songs on a streaming thing. Or I, I love the fact that this is an international event and I embrace that level of superstardom. Dominique Samuels, your greatest Britain. My Greatest Britain is Julie Bindle, who is a feminist campaigner. She wrote a really compelling um, article recently, really about feminism and the state of it today and how a lot of young women are being twisted into this sort of progressive feminist idea where a lot of the time in terms of the trans debate, Julie was attacked a lot, where women's rights and identities are slowly being eroded and turned into something really quite unrecognisable. I think she's a really valuable voice on this. And Andrew Doyle, your greatest Britain, is sort of on a similar theme, yes, would you say? Yes, it's uh, Kathleen Stock, who is a professor at the University of Sussex, who wrote a book recently called Material Girls, and, uh, you know, she's a gender-critical feminist, so she believes that uh, women's rights can only be sustained through a recognition of the biological reality of womanhood. She's got a lot of flack, as you know, that's now a very controversial position to hold. Mm. And uh, she's been... Uh, well, there have been protests at the University of Sussex which have tipped over into outright harassment and threats. Uh, there have been protesters dressed up in paramilitary, sort of masked oh kind of things, setting off flares, putting posters up demanding that she be fired, sending threatening messages to the university saying, you better fire this or you'll see us around. I mean, it's really getting to that point where it's crossed the line into outright harassment. It's and, misogyny, uh, it, in my opinion. I feel as though it, this is what it's turning into. It's like this hatred mm. and prejudice of women, particularly gender-critical feminists, mm. where women nowadays really aren't allowed to have an opinion on this right. stuff. When it disproportionately affects us, why can't we have an opinion? And is your union jackass connected? Actually? It is connected because it is the activists and the, the protesters who are involved in this. Because I think I'm all for... I think peaceful protest is at the heart of any stable democracy and I'm all for it. If they want to protest for whatever reason, that's fine. But it's this intimidatory approach, this kind of bullying, threatening, harassing thing. And the good thing, however, is that the university authorities are having none of it. So the, the vice chancellor today made a statement saying, we will not tolerate this kind of harassment and threats. We are not going to fire this person just because you are uh, threatening them. And that's the right way to respond. So many universities are not responding in that way and they capitulate out of fear. Yeah. Uh, to, to this mob. And we saw it in Edinburgh with Neil Finn when he was a falsely accused of being a white supremacist and a rape apologist. None of it was true and the university didn't stand up for him. They, they just, they just went along with what the activists said. And people have got to start taking a stand. Now, Pauline, Amy Nicali, your union jackass. Uh, my union jackass this week is Therese Coffey. 
Uh, so I started my portfolio of hatred against this woman when she defended <laughs> the um, minimum wage, I mean the universal credit cut, saying just work two extra hours. I thought that was, I was, I was, I was, I was OK. Well, it's not you. a cut, it's a removal of the uplift. Yeah, removal of But she said a way around it would be just work two extra hours. Um, so then I kind of had my eye on her. And then yesterday, so I find it really curious that at the Tory party conference, at the moment, I mean... I don't know whether this this is probably up for debate, but they're not doing a massively good job, are they? We've got HDB shortage, food shortages, quite a lot of problems in the country. And then they're celebrating at the end of the day and, and going and doing karaoke. Time of, time of her life. Let's have a look. Have we got it? Oh, let's brilliant. Have a look at right, that. let's have a look. Are you ready? So, Amy, the, the view is this was an inappropriate song because she's singing I'm because, Having the Time of My Life. at the, the very day. moment that she was singing that, as the clock struck midnight, 5.8 million people lost £20 a week. Right? And you do us this oversensitivity about what Trace uh, Coffee's doing? Well, again, I, I think, I think uh, politicians are, are human beings like everyone else. They have a right to have a, a good time. But do you in still the have evening? like an office Christmas but, but, party when like you're you're clearly not doing very well? Like I kind of understand Michael Gove going out in Aberdeen having a laugh, but I just think it's weird why they're all patting themselves on the back. Yeah, but, but you've got to remember that from their perspective, they aren't doing anything uh, wrong. I mean, you you have a political disagreement with them, but their intention isn't to make people's lives worse; it's to, to make them lives better. But they're just doing it in the way that you would perceive to be the wrong way. Like, I do in this case, yes. So, so, but I don't think they're celebrating in the... They're not celebrating because people are poorer. But you <laughs> they're know, just, you they're know, celebrating you know, at the end of a day's work. Yeah, but it's just, yeah. it's just weird. And, Dan, you have that theory that all politicians are just, like, ugly showbiz people. And I think this karaoke obsession proves yeah. it. Well, I certainly didn't like the optics, and I'm going to be honest about this, and it annoys a lot of journalists. I don't like the optics at these party conferences of the journalists and the broadcasters who are meant to be keeping these politicians honest going and partying with yeah, them because I think so it shows weird. Weird. that our establishment, our media, our political establishment are pretty corrupt and I want outsider journalists who are prepared to actually take these people on. I don't want folk from the BBC who are partying. They're doing with, karaoke. No, that's, that's true. I think there needs to be... You need to hold them... To, I mean, I went to a, a press drinks with Jeremy Corbyn and the president, and that was a very different thing, because they clearly all hated each other. What did you... And that, that, is, that is more healthy, I think. <laughs> Dominique Samuels, your union jackass. My union jackass is Ellen Jones, who um, is a Welsh politician for Plaid Cymru, and she was the pres presiding officer um, during the vaccine oh. passport debate in Wales that passed by one vote, where she wouldn't allow the Conservative MS, Gareth oh, Davies, to And she to loved it. Vote. Let's yeah. have a look at the moment, because she loved it. And so we still have a member who's desperately trying to get into Zoom, but cannot get into Zoom. No, 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 Darren Miller. That is, we are holding the vote. That is Darren outrageous, Miller. outrageous, Dominique. Yeah. It was an outrageous decision. Outrageous. And it's damned Wales to vaccine passports By because this Tory guy couldn't put his vote in. Yeah. I think it's despicable. It's really is. It's because disgusting. also they're not allowed full in-person democracy in Wales, you know, because they love this... That, they're so paranoid, they're so hysterical, Mark Drakeford. So they're insisting on having this hybrid situation where not everyone can be in person in Parliament. I think it was a disgrace. Well, look, uh, my greatest Britain is the Queen, who was on absolute sparkling form. Honestly, I can look at that photo and it just makes me feel happy. <laughs> there she is. What an incredible woman. Uh, she was kicking off the relay for the Commonwealth Games, which is in Birmingham next year. She'll be at the opening ceremony and she put a little speech in. I just think she's a joyful woman. She gives me joy. She gives the country joy. My goodness, we need her going strong. And she was today, which is great. My union jackass, the hypocrites of the insulate Britain movement, who we now know have been exposed as folk who want to protest and cause chaos and carnage, when actually this bloke, look at him, he doesn't give a damn about the environment because he's going all around the world. And uh, hypocrites, they're hypocrites, a lot, of, a lot of them, and I think they should all be locked up.